Piquant peaches present a sweet convenience. It means we get to enjoy fruity desserts, breakfasts or snacks during the winter month. Infused with lemon and thyme, these clingstone peaches make a great filling for soft buckwheat crepes, a comforting gluten-free dessert or vegan breakfast that is low in sugar to warm you up from the inside out. Let's start by making the buckwheat crepes. They are gluten-free and pretty delicious. So mix the buckwheat flour, chickpea flour, brown rice flour, tapioca or potato starch and a pinch of salt in a large mixing bowl. All the measurements and a printable version of the recipe can be found on our website. The link is in the description under the video. If you can't find buckwheat flour, you can use regular all-purpose or plain flour. You can also use our recipe for the Mauritian crepe that we shared previously. Just omit the spring onions and reduce the salt to make it suitable for a sweet filling. Once you've whisked all the flours together, add the coconut milk and a little of the water. For today I'm using canned coconut milk which is thicker and yields a nicer texture for the crepes. But you can also use any other non-dairy milk or homemade coconut milk for which we have another video, check the description for the link. Start to whisk to form a thick batter. Then add the remaining water while continuously whisking and drawing in the flour to form a smooth lump-free batter. Now let the mixture rest for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile you can slice the canned peaches. Peaches are the one fruit that I relish their canned version, especially the clingstone variety. The California clingstone peaches are the ones that are more commonly available in Canada. Clean stone peaches are rarely sold fresh in the stores, as their stone are so well attached to the flesh that they require mechanical methods to be removed. It is reassuring to know that the California clean stone peaches are canned in their own juice or other fruit juices and contain no preservatives. You can even use this juice to sweeten your recipes. So slice the peaches rather thickly and set them aside for now. Let's continue to make the crepes. Heat a crepe pan or cast iron griddle on medium-high temperature. To brush oil on the pan, I'm using a paper towel. Fold the corners toward the center and pinch to form a balloon. Then dip it in a little oil and lightly brush it on the pan. Once the pan is hot, ladle on just enough batter to coat it thinly. If the pan is light enough, tilt it to swirl the batter around. If not, use the back of a round cooking spoon to spread the batter evenly in a circular motion thinly on the pan. Cook for about 30 seconds to 1 minute until a spatula glides easily underneath the crepe. If it feels sticky, allow the crepe to cook for a little longer, flip and cook the other side until golden and crispy. Remove from the pan and set aside onto a plate. We've actually shared a few more tips on how to make successful crepes in our previously mentioned video. If you haven't watched it yet, be sure to check it out. So keep making the rest of the crepes until you use up all the batter and stack them on top of one another to keep them soft. Once all the crepes are done, we can quickly sauté the peaches. Place the sliced peaches in a dry skillet. Don't turn the heat on just yet. Squeeze on about a tablespoon of fresh lemon juice.
pluck the leaves from the sprigs of thyme. You can also use half teaspoon of dried thyme if you don't have fresh ones. I'm adding 2 to 3 tablespoons of maple syrup for the flavor, but you can omit it if you wish to reduce the sugar. In fact, peaches by themselves are relatively much lower in sugar compared to other fruits. Turn the heat on high and sauté until the juices have thickened. The high heat will quickly evaporate the liquid so that the peaches still hold their shape. That's the good thing about canned peaches is that contrary to fresh ones, they do retain their appearance, texture, flavor, as well as nutritional content when incorporated in cooked recipes. Once the juice has thickened, turn off the heat. To serve, tuck the warm thyme-infused peaches inside the soft walls of the buckwheat crepes. Optionally, you can lightly drizzle some rose water custard sauce on top to make these crepes exceptionally Moorish. We will be sharing the recipe for the rose water custard sauce soon, so stay tuned. There is something about the thyme and peaches that is refreshingly invigorating. Take a bite and this will feel like a department store of flavors. I've borrowed this line from an anime that I'm currently watching entitled Toriko, which is pretty hilarious. It revolves around food, although not all vegan, but it's the kind of weird that's fascinating, full of humor and adventure. If you like One Piece and Dragon Ball Z, you'll probably like this one too. So that's it folks, I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Give us a thumbs up if you have and leave us a comment or let us know if you'll try it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, we'll send you an email when we have a new recipe or an announcement. Check the description under the video for the link to the printable recipe and mentioned videos. Or you can click on the thumbnails to keep watching more of our videos. I'll catch you in our next video. Bye!